Welcome to the Auburn Film Room. I'm Lauren Sisler. This is Cole Kublik. Week 8 of the college football season. Auburn getting ready to host Arkansas. And this is a much different Auburn team than we saw in Week 3 of the season. What would you say the biggest difference between Week 3 Auburn and Week 8 Auburn? Uh, well, they seem to know who the quarterback is, not trying to go with the quarterback rotation. I think the offensive line has improved greatly, and I think the defense knows who they are. One thing we talked about at the beginning of the season, Lauren, was how could Kevin Steele take this defense, which had a cast of characters with different experience levels and a lot of guys from different places, and sort of mold them into a unit and have them play as one. He's really simplified things, playing just one or two, maybe three coverages per game and obviously allowing the front four to just line up and play football. So there hasn't been as much confusion, and that group has really showed up. Let's break down some film, and we'll start with Cameron Petway. Against Mississippi State last week, or two weeks ago, I should say, carry on Johnson out of the game early on. Cameron Petway expected to carry the load. 39 carries, 169 yards, big day for him, and of course chiseling away at some big yards. It started up front, and you'll see first here, we'll watch a couple of Cam Petway plays, but. The push by this Auburn offensive line was fantastic. And watch over here on the right side. You'll see a nice push. Braden Smith does a really nice job in double teams, working with the center or his right tackle. But here at right tackle, you'll see just an excellent job of getting a little bit of movement over on that right side. And obviously, working up to the second level with his center gets a nice push and really allows Petway to make a cut to the outside. Another block you'll see here, Alex Kozan, left guard is going to pull around. He gets up to the linebacker, and Petway did a really nice job, Lauren, of going north and south and making one cut late, usually to the outside, and he was able to turn that into big yardage. So offensive line, physical at the point of attack, able to get some push, and Cameron Petway really pressed the line of scrimmage. So waited till he got close to the line of scrimmage before deciding which way he was going to cut. And Cole, as we're going to see here, Cam Petway also wearing down defense as being able to pick up those four, six, eight yards and the durability and being able to just get after guys and, and get those extra yards. Carries the ball over 40 times in a game. And I think what you see Rhett Lashley catch Mississippi State in here is the three-man front. Obviously, five on three, you always like your opportunity there to be able to get yards. As we mentioned, Petway pushing the line of scrimmage and then making cuts late to sort of force these linebackers into a false read. It really worked out nice. As you'll see, big push here by the right side of the offensive line. Braden Smith, Robert Leff again. Nice push in Petway. Again, that late cut and then gets north and south. And he's a physical enough runner that just getting to the line of scrimmage and then putting his head and shoulder pads down to try to bull his way forward for a few more yards ends up working out. Here's the pace and tempo. You freeze that defense into a three-man front. And there's the late cut. You see it just one more time as Petway just going to press that line of scrimmage, make one cut late. And pretty good movement up front again by this Auburn offensive line. Right side of the line, Smith again with left. Great push at right guard and right tackle. Those two really do work together well when they're double teaming a defensive lineman. And Rhett Lashley just stays on the gas. He has a look that he likes. He's trapped Mississippi State in that. Wants to go fast, stay with the same play. Petway's going to bounce this the opposite direction. Excellent job by Jerry. It's James at left tackle. This is his first start, second start in a row, he was able to do a nice job getting moving and being physical at the line of scrimmage as well. All right, let's flip over to the other side of the football. We talk about the defense. They haven't let up all season long. And how about the pass rush? It really showed up here in this game against Mississippi State. Yeah, I think this is going to be key this week because this is an Arkansas football team that is going more and more spread concept. When they seem to have a lot of success, they seem to be doing it through the air. Raleigh Williams had a big game last week on the ground against Ole Miss, the most yards rushing against a Hugh Freeze coach team he's ever given up. but. I still do believe Dan Enos, the offensive coordinator for the Hawks, is going to want to try to do things through the air. If Auburn can win with four and five up front, it really frees up the numbers on the back end to be able to win that game on the back, challenge Austin Allen to try to find some things within extra defenders. But you'll see up front, when this is going to happen, and Mississippi State's been struggling at right tackle or left tackle this fall, but just this one-on-one -on -one that Carl Lawson's going to beat, just kind of a dip and rip underneath, uses a speed rush, and obviously this turns into points for Auburn as Montrevious Adams returns that fumble. Winning the one-on-ones up front, I think are gonna be huge here. You see Lawson, just one hesitation, dip and rip right under Elton Jenkins, and he's able to get a scoop and score for Montrevious Adams. Just an excellent job winning a one-on-one, -on -one. and if you can do that with four and five defenders up front, it gives you a huge advantage on the back end. And Cole, you talk about some of the challenges Arkansas presents. A good example you'll show here when Alabama faced up against Arkansas a couple weeks ago. Uh, 12 personnel, so one back and two tight ends. 
So still trying to show that they're that big, physical, smash mouth football team, but trying to do it through the air. Winning one-on-ones, winning individual matchups. So it's just going to be play action protection here. You'll see a guard pull over. Tim Williams going to win his one-on-one. Ryan Anderson down at the bottom is going to beat the guard back inside as Ragnow is going to pull around and try to take him. So these are the things that if Auburn can do with individuals up front in winning some of these one-on-ones, we'll get another good look at it here. Is Tim Williams going to beat Jeremy Sprinkle inside? This isn't fair. To ask a tight end to block Tim Williams is just that, – that, that's not going to happen, even though I think he's taking a false step the wrong direction. And then over on this side as well, you'll see Ragnow is going to pull around, try to take on Ryan Anderson and get beat back underneath. These are the kind of plays that Montrevious Adams, Carl Lawson, Deverell Lawrence and company, Marlon Davidson, I think all can go out and win these one-on-ones and have success getting to Austin Allen. The thing that you notice about Austin Allen's toughness, and he's taken an absolute beating this year, uh, but Arkansas has given up a lot and they try to do it through the air. They give up a lot of pressure, they give up sacks, and I think Auburn has the individuals up front to only play four or five in the box as far as trying to rush and have those extra defenders on the back end. Okay, so we know Austin Allen is going to be a big challenge. Some of their receivers for Arkansas. What do you think is another big challenge for Auburn if they want to get their fourth win in a row? Well, Arkansas's defense has actually given up poor numbers on the ground. They've given up 18 rushes of 20 yards or more, 17 rushing touchdowns on the season. Both of those are worse than the SEC. But they have a pretty good defensive line. I mean, Deatrick Wise is a really nice player out on the edge. Taiwan Johnson sort of an undersized defensive tackle, but he moves really well and he can penetrate and disrupt. B. John Jackson's your big prototypical nose guard that they play with. So they have some talent up front, but it's just a matter of I think they have to play high risk with those guys by slanting and stunning and asking them to do some things to make up for uh, disadvantages on the second and third level. So by doing that, they put themselves in bad situations. You saw those cutback runs by Cam Petway. Those can be big. Those can be explosive plays in this game, especially if Carryon Johnson's back because he's a guy, when he gets to the outside, can turn north and south and go the distance. It's, it's going to be a game in which I think big cutback runs for Auburn can be there, uh, but the offensive line just has to handle some of that talent up front first.